Hi there. Now for this question, we're told that the heights of a population of women are normally distributed with a mean mu centimetres and standard deviation sigma centimetres. And it is known that 30% of the women are taller than 172 centimetres and 5% are shorter than 154 centimetres. And in the first part, we've got to sketch a diagram to show the distribution of heights represented by this information for three marks. And then in part B, we need to show that the mean mu equals 154 plus 1.6449 times sigma for three marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this, haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, you might want to fast forward just to check your answer, or I'll take you slowly through the work solution. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Now, the first thing I'd want to do is to define a random variable. And I'm going to say, let x be that random variable. Let x be the random variable, RV for short, and it's going to be the height of the women. I'll just write height here, okay? And if we look at that distribution, we'll have a curve looking something like this with the mean mu in the center here. Underneath this, I would always encourage you to draw the standardized normal distribution given by the variable z. z has a mean of zero and a variance of one. Now, I've got to show this result here and I can see that it's got 154 in, which is this measurement up here. So I'm going to just concentrate on the fact that 5% of the women have a height which is shorter than 154 centimeters. So what that means is that it must be to the left of the mean. We've got a value down here. Let's just say we mark it in there. This observed value, just call it x1 if you like, this observed value is 154 centimetres. And the probability of getting less than 154 centimetres is 5%. So it's that area in there which is 0.05, 5%. Now, we then drop this value, we project it down onto the standardized normal curve, and that would mean that this area to the left here is also 5%. Okay, so just mark that in there as also being 0.05. And let's say that the z value that corresponds to x1 is, say, z1. Now, there's always a connection between our observed values and the standardized z value. That connection we should be familiar with is that z always equals the observed value, x, minus the mean, mu, all divided by the standard deviation, sigma. So for this distribution here, where we've got x distributed normally, I'll just put this in, I forgot that, okay? It's a normal distribution with mean, mu, and variance sigma squared. Then we've got, just come down here, we've got our value z1, must be equal to the observed value, which is 154, minus the mean, mu, all divided by the standard deviation, sigma. Now I need to get the value of z1 so I can get to this equation here. And I can get z1 if I look up in tables. So I'll just write here from tables. And I've got an extract to the tables here, where they give us a probability that it seeds a given value of z. And 
The problem is this, va this value of p here is on the right of z. We've got a value here on the left, okay, 0.05. But we can rely on the symmetry of the graph. From the tables here, you'll see that if p is 0.05, then the corresponding z value is 1.6449. Remember, this is the number of standard deviations above the mean that would give us this probability. But by symmetry, we can see that this value of z would be on the negative side. Okay, So in fact, the value that we want is that z1 would equal minus 1.6449. Okay? So I just need to substitute this up into 1. Okay, we'll just say sub in 1. And if I substitute that into 1, we've got in place of z1 then minus 1.6449 equals 154 minus mu divided by sigma. And if I rearrange this then by multiplying by sigma, I'll have minus 1.6449 sigma equals 154 minus mu. And if I add mu to both sides and add this term to both sides, I'm going to end up with what we had to show. That is that mu equals 154 plus 1.6449 times sigma. Okay?